Conjugate addition is an interesting and uh, kind of complicated thing that we cover in organic chemistry. And so let's first discuss how we can form alpha, beta, unsaturated ketones and aldehydes. So if we've got a ketone, we know what that looks like. Here's the alpha and the beta carbons, respectively. If we have a double bond between those two uh, positions, we call this an unsaturated or an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And there are a couple of different ways that we could uh, synthesize that. So for example, if we have cyclohexanone, we can treat this with uh, sodium hydroxide and chlorine, okay? and that will uh, alpha chlorinate, all right? And then we can treat this with uh, pyridine. Pyridine is a nice base that will allow this to uh, do an e E2 elimination to give us um, the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. The aldol reaction is another way to make alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes now an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde might look like this so there's the aldehyde functional group at the end and we have um, a double bond at the alpha between the alpha and the beta positions so this can be made with um, acetaldehyde and we can add uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, heat to uh, give us the product there okay now it's useful to draw the resonance structures of these alpha beta unsaturated guys so we can kind of be familiar where a nucleophile is going to attack. So if I've got this uh, ketone, I can draw a resonance structure that has a kind of a carbyl cation down there and a negative charge on this oxygen here, okay? Now, I can also take these uh, pi bonding electrons and scoot them over to create a new position for the pi bond. Okay. And these are the resonance structures for a particular alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone. And if we draw now our structure here and we just label the delta plus and delta minus sites, the oxygen is of course delta minus in all of these resonance structures. And the carbon here is delta plus and the carbon here is delta plus. Now, we've seen nucleophiles attack right here, okay? And we call this 1-2 uh, addition, okay? And this will, after workup, give us a situation where we have our nucleophile attacked. And so we can do sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride or react it with a green yard. There's many different kinds of nucleophiles, okay? Or we can take this guy here and treat it with uh, special nucleophiles we'll talk about in a bit and um, the nucleophile will add um, to a four, okay? So it's a one four addition. So here's the nucleophile, it's going to attack here and uh, there's various arrows involved. And so here's the one four addition. We'll get an alcohol I mean, uh, we'll get a, a ketone, I'm sorry, and uh, we'll get the nucleophile attack attached uh, here, okay? So when the nucleophile attacks the beta carbon, we call this a conjugate addition, okay? And we use this word uh, from a conjugated diene, okay? If all of this doesn't make sense, don't worry too much. We don't need to really review conjugated um, dienes or anything like that for this, okay? So let's uh, discuss some of the features here. 
<clears throat> As I mentioned, ordinary boring aldehydes can react with green yards. Okay. So if we add methyl magnesium bromide, for example, followed by weak acid workup, we will get um, a new alcohol where the methyl group has added in place of the carbonyl carbon. Okay, So that's called a 1-2 addition. And that's quite standard. We're comfortable with that. Now what's new is something we'll see. Okay, And we can use Gilman reagents. Okay, And in this case, the nucleophile is going to be attacking the beta carbon. And after workup, we're going to get our methyl group attached to the beta carbon. Okay, And of course, we call this a 1,4 addition. Okay. A uh, one four addition or a conjugate. We'll just let's call it a conjugate addition. Okay. Okay. So let me take you through the mechanism that this is occurring. Okay. So here we go. We have our uh, aldehyde, and we're treating this with. Uh, the Gilman reagent to form this aldehyde with an additional methyl group at the beta carbon. So in our first step, we're going to have uh, the CH3 anion okay, attack the beta carbon. Okay, A for attack here, and that's going to position the methyl group um, right there. Okay. We add H3O plus to this, okay? And this can make the enol, for example, okay? And the enol recall is not the most favorable structure at equilibrium, it's rather the aldehyde. So this can tautomerize to give you the aldehyde under acid conditions, okay? So how would I draw these steps? I would draw uh, protonation, okay, occurring like so, okay, to give you the let's draw protonation to give you the um, enol, okay, and then I would protonate the alpha carbon to give us the aldehyde that's protonated and then I would take water or something like that whatever solvent we have and deprotonate that guy to give us the reaction products okay so if you need to know the letters that would be um, attack then protonation, and then protonation, and then deprotonation. Okay. Um, you could skip a step if you wanted to, and if that's fine with me too. Any kind of proposal here is fine as long as it's a protonation deprotonation event. All right. Let me show you another example of a uh, conjugate addition. Okay. And we're going to use uh, enolate nucleophiles. So when you use Gilman reagents, well, perhaps I should use an R group here. When you use Gilman reagents, these serve to uh, attack the beta carbon with an alkyl group, OK? And another way to um, attack the beta carbon is to use so-called uh, soft nucleophiles, uh, things that uh, come from deprotonating 
beta dicarbonyl compounds like a diester or a diketone like here. This will give us a nucleophile that preferentially enjoys attacking beta carbons. So if we add now this alpha beta unsaturated <coughs> aldehyde after uh, workup. <coughs> so step um, one would be sodium hydroxide, step two would be this aldehyde, step three would be to do an acid workup. Here we would get, uh, you know, the new group coming in, okay, and that new group is a six-membered ring with a couple of uh, oxygens there, okay. So it's just creating a nucleophile. Here's your dicarbonyl. Here's your carbanion, and this is the uh, nucleophile or the R group that's going to be attacking there, okay. So that's, that's a, a, a great reaction. We have different names for this. We call the nucleophile and the electrophile the Michael donor and the Michael acceptor. So here's the diketone. Okay, and I'll just draw the enolate there. So this is called a Michael donor, okay, and uh, the electrophile is of course the aldehyde that we talked about, that's unsaturated, there's a delta plus on the beta carbon, and this is called the Michael um, acceptor, okay, so there's various Michael donors and acceptors, and let me give you a table here that's in your uh, textbook, so in our textbook, we have 1,3 um, diketones, 1,3 diesters, beta ketoesters, beta cyanoketones, nitros, and Gilman reagents. These are all going to be the nucleophile. Let me just label it up here. Those are all going to be the nucleophile that attacks the beta carbon of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, aldehyde, ester, amide, nitrile, or nitroalkene. Okay, so all of these reactions, you have six on each side. Six times six is 36. So you could potentially draw 36 different reactions. Even though I am on YouTube and I could draw all the mechanisms and products for all of that, I won't. I'm gonna just, um, yeah, just do some of the sample problems now, okay? So let's do problem uh, 22.4 to get us started. So we're supposed to treat each of these with uh, diethyl um, Gilman, diethyl cuprate, okay? Lithium diethyl cuprate. So that's the Gilman reagent. And remember, that's uh, a source of uh, ethyl anion or CH3, CH2 uh, minus. That's going to be the nucleophile. So we need to identify the, let's switch colors here. We need to identify the alpha and the beta carbon, and then we need to install an ethyl group at that beta carbon and remove the double bond, okay? So keep the ketone or the aldehyde or the whatevers and just stick on to the beta carbon here, an ethyl group. That's all you need to do. Let's do part B. Now this is a Michael acceptor known as a nitrile, okay? A nitrile is a carboxylic acid derivative, so it should not be too confusing. And so uh, what we have here in our starting, well, let me draw up here. This is called the uh, alpha carbon with respect to the carbon of the carboxylic acid derivative, and this is the beta carbon, okay? So once again, we want to keep the nitrile intact, and we want to add an ethyl group here, okay? In part C, we want to identify the uh, beta carbon. It's right there. So we want to redraw this molecule, the five-membered ring, the ethyl ester. And what we want to do is install um, an ethyl group at the beta carbon. Okay, so that's, that's all you need to do. It's quite uh, straightforward, okay?
So here um, it asks us to draw the, uh, the products and then also a mechanism, but I think, in my opinion, it's easier just to use the mechanism to generate and draw the reaction products, okay? So first we have this uh, beta diketone, okay, it's a 1,3 diketone, and we can recognize that the alpha hydrogen there in the middle is the most acidic ones as opposed to the uh, hydrogens, you know, on the ends, okay? So we'll go ahead and deprotonate that guy there. And that's going to be our Michael donor, okay? And the Michael acceptor is going to be my alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone with this nice little cyclohexyl group off, off there, off to the side, okay? So once again, we want to attack the beta carbon. So here's the alpha carbon, here's the beta carbon. So we want to attack the beta carbon right here, okay? And move the electrons as they would naturally progress towards a more electronegative element, okay? And so what we get from there is attachment of the diketone moiety here to that beta carbon. Okay, I've dotted it so I can orientate, uh, or, and I messed up. You see, this is great. So um, let's count the carbons. I was just going to say, count your, always count your carbons and make sure you don't make a mistake. And I made a mistake here, okay? So here's my ketone, and then the alpha and the beta, I, I messed it up. I forgot to put the beta carbon. So always, always double check the carbon count to make sure you have the correct number of carbons, okay? And I was missing one, so let's label that beta carbon. So that's where I wanted to count, okay? So there's one, two, then my ketone, one, two, then my ketone, okay? And now we want to protonate this guy. So here I'm going to do the shortcut, as I mentioned previously on the other slide. I'm going to protonate here. And this will give me um, the product. Okay. So this is early enough in the book that they're not asking me to do a Robinson annulation or something like that. So I'm just going to stop there and uh, we're going to call it quits. Okay. So the final product would be predicted to be this, and the mechanism would be deprotonation, attack, and then protonation, okay? D-A-P. All right. Now let's talk about the uh, stork enamine synthesis. Okay, now let's talk about um, something that's not efficient, okay? So it's found that, that this is not too efficient, okay? And that's to take something like this, okay? Transform it with LDA onto a nucleophile. And again, that's done by deprotonation, okay? And we're going to try to use this as a Michael donor, okay? And then we'll want to add this to, I don't know, an alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde as usual, and try to do H3O plus, okay? And hopefully we'll get the, um, the product, okay? And as before, so we don't make any mistakes, let's label the alpha and beta carbons, and make sure we're counting that uh, correctly, okay? All right, and let's put back in that carbonyl. So this is not a very efficient uh, process. Not very good yields are uh, obtained, and um, this can do other things. Uh, it can attack the, uh, the carbonyl, for example, and it's not very nucleophilic. It's, yeah, it's, it's not really a good reaction. Now, What's found experimentally is that you can take the um, cyclohexanone 
and you can treat this with um, a dialkylamine to give you what's called the stork enamine, okay? Uh, let's just write R here. Now, enamines are 100% this structure. There's no other possibility, and, um, you know, you get 100% uh, this guy here. You get loss of water, and this reaction is, is very, uh, very efficient, okay? And this is a good nucleophile, all right? It's a good nucleophile right at uh, this carbon. So then you can treat this with uh, your alpha-beta unsaturated um, carbonyl compound of choice, followed by you know, your acid workup, and you'll get um, the desired product above that we're trying to synthesize, okay? So this is quite uh, interesting, and uh, let me show you how it works, okay? So this right here is efficient, and this is what the Stork enamine synthesis is. It was figured out by Stork, and so we call it the Stork synthesis, all right? So, I'm not going to review all of these reactions because we've learned about it. So remember that if you take a ketone or an aldehyde and you treat it with a um, secondary amine, okay, with like a drop of acetic acid, just a very small amount of catalytic amount here, you're going to form an enamine, okay? Now, an enamine has characteristics in that um, there's a resonance structure It's weird to think of this as being a nucleophile because um, it's, it's neutral, right? You got that plus on the nitrogen and then the minus here. But this is nucleophilic uh, because the negative charge at the alpha position, okay? So the alpha negative charge is the nucleophile. So we're going to go ahead now attack our um, alpha beta unsaturated. I wanted to do an aldehyde. So I'll do an aldehyde here. Okay, there's my aldehyde. Here's the alpha, here's the beta. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those electrons and attack the beta carbon and move the electrons as we normally would towards a more electronegative atom. And what we get here is this guy here. And then we treat this with H3O plus, okay? The first thing that happens is uh, we regenerate our aldehyde, okay? I'm, I'm worried I'm going to draw over my figure, so let me draw it off to the side here, okay? And then in the presence of H3O+, plus, which is basically, you know, a water and H+, plus, we're going to put back water onto our substance, okay? So this, this reaction up on the very top is in equilibrium. And if we add a lot of water, we're going to push this reaction to the left using the principles of equilibrium. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of steps here. I'm not going to draw all the curved arrow reaction mechanism for this. But this will regenerate the ketone on the original six-membered ring and uh, nothing happens to the uh, aldehyde, hopefully, okay? So that's the sequence of events. The first uh, step is to kind of form the enamine, okay? The second step is to attack, um, or the second stage is to attack the um, alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl substance, and then H3O plus does two things. It converts that enolate back to the ketone or aldehyde or whatever, and then also hydrolyzes, okay? So the third step 
is to hydrolyze the enamine. Okay, so you make the enamine and then you take it off. Okay, so that nitrogen is just a transient feature that makes this reaction much more uh, efficient. So let's go ahead now and do problem 47. Now here it's very critical how I explain things. Uh, you basically want to use the disconnection approach once again to figure out what the starting materials um, are. And so uh, we first want to think about uh, this being our starting Michael uh, donor. We're going to take this, we're going to add uh, a dialkyl amine, and then we're going to add an unsaturated alpha beta unsaturated, uh, you know, something, okay? So we want to cir circle those components here in the molecule, okay? And then we want to identify um, the alpha and the beta carbons here of my uh, ketone, and I'll use uh, dark blue, I guess, to analyze what that is, okay? So it's this guy here, okay? And so the uh, pro proposed synthesis would be to take our starting material, which is called acetophenone, okay, acetophenone, and we would first add our dialkyl amine, okay. We then would add the alpha beta unsaturated um, guy. Let me move it down here. Okay. So that you don't lose any carbons when you're starting out, maybe it's a good idea to just label the alpha and the beta. And remember to create a double bond there between the alpha and the beta uh, carbons. That's what's unsaturated, and that's what attracts those electrons and pushes them through the system, okay? And don't forget, on step three, we need to add H3O+. Plus. That hydrolyzes the uh, intermediate iminium or enamine and all that, okay? Let's do the same thing here. So here's our uh, starting uh, compound, okay? And it kind of zigzags down towards the bottom here, but make sure you select all of those uh, carbons there. And then in uh, dark blue here, we'll uh, circle the remaining carbons. And again, identify the alpha carbon and the beta carbon, okay? And so what you'll wanna do is uh, take your starting ketone that's given to us, okay? Step one, we wanna add the dialkyl amine. We then wanna add the ketone here. It's part of a six-membered ring and we want to make sure we put a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbon and then do the H3O plus, okay? So that will give us the uh, product there. Let's do C. So we got a three carbon fragment. Make sure you circle those three carbons. They zigzag down here, okay? And then we want to um, identify the other component which we call the Michael acceptor, okay? And identify the, whoops, the alpha and the beta carbon. So the alpha's on the right and the beta's on the left here as it's drawn. And so we wanna now stitch this together. So we would start with our aldehyde, okay? We could even draw it going down like that if you prefer. We'll add the dialkyl amine. And then step two, we'll add our ketone, okay? put the double bond in there. And then step three, we're gonna add H3O plus, okay? So I call this the disconnection approach. You're basically just breaking those two pieces apart and then you're adding a double bond to the, um, between the alpha and the beta carbons. And then, you know, you have to just then write out the reagents necessary, okay? So uh, that's problem uh, 47. And once again, that's the Michael addition, okay? Now let me talk about the Robinson annulation. So here's the slide showing the Robinson annulation. You wanna take your uh, traditional Michael donor and traditional Michael acceptor, treat them with sodium hydroxide and you get the Michael addition happening. And then what you wanna do is just maybe add a little bit more to sodium hydroxide, crank up the heat, okay? And then spontaneously, there's an aldol condensation, right, which expels water that is occurring in this reaction. So from two very simple starting materials, you very rapidly build up a very complicated molecule. Uh, many natural product syntheses uh, use this route to very rapidly gain entry into a uh, precursor that can then be transformed into the desired uh, natural product, okay? 
So it's in a very efficient synthetic uh, sequence of steps. So how does this work? Well, let's just review these reactions. Um, first, we take our um, diketone, and we recognize that uh, there's a hydrogen here in the middle that's flanked by two electron withdrawing carbonyls. So we're going to deprotonate that most acidic guy there to give us the enolate, okay? The enolate can now do a conjugate addition with this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And so the flow of electrons will look like this, as we've seen before. And that's the attack step, okay? When that occurs, it takes a while to draw these guys out, doesn't it? You form the enolate, okay? And it just hangs out there and sits, sits there for a while, okay? Now, if you add uh, water to this, right, or acid, anyways, this is going to protonate. So here's water that's present, okay? So we don't have H plus in this uh, sequence of events. We just have neutral water that could perhaps protonate that guy there and give us the... Um, structure here in the middle, okay? So what I've described there, DAP, are the three steps necessary to do the Michael addition between any Michael donor and any Michael acceptor you like. Now, what happens at this stage is we add more sodium hydroxide, but definitely we add heat, okay? We heat this reaction mixture up, and that causes a chalizin, I'm sorry, an aldol condensation, an intramolecular aldol condensation. Okay, so let me draw in green here which hydrogen we're going to pull off. Okay, I, uh, I forgot to add my uh, methyl group, so let me put the methyl group in here. Okay, so that green hydrogen there is acidic. We want to take a hydroxide here, and we want to deprotonate that guy here, and that's going to form a enolate. Okay, so that's uh, deprotonation. Okay. Now that we have that enolate, we know that it can attack ketones, aldehydes, things of this sort. And so we're going to attack this uh, adjacent ketone to form another ring, okay? Forms a ring. So uh, annulus means ring, so annulation is like a ring forming reaction. So this is the ring forming step in this sequence. So that's A for attack. Okay, and it looks like an alkoxide, doesn't it? So now what we want to do is uh, protonate this guy. So this is going to react with water that's uh, in the reaction solvent, okay? And uh, we protonate that guy there. I'm trying to draw very small to fit all of this on the same slide. I don't know uh, how successful I will be. Now that we have the neutral alcohol, we can take another alpha hydrogen here, and we can deprotonate here. Okay, and this will give me the enolate. And this enolate uh, can do this so-called E1CB mechanism. The conjugate base can do an E1 reaction or eliminate like so. So that's the elimination step, okay? So, um, okay, I think I have all the letters in there. And this will give me the final, uh, final, final, final product, okay?
And so that gives me a new alpha beta unsaturated uh, ketone. So that's the Robinson annulation. Um, and uh, that's problem 22.49 in the textbook. I thought, hey, let's do a problem. And it says, draw a complete mechanism for the following transformation. So there it is on the screen there. Okay. Uh, that's it for this uh, section. Thanks for watching. Um, have a good day.